Hi, this is Epic M Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you about stuff. Stuffy stuff. The stuffiest stuff in the whole stuffing world. Yeah, I thought about that ahead of time. Um, anyways, today I'm going to be covering lighting. Not just any lighting, deferred lighting. Not just any deferred lighting, 2.5D deferred lighting. Yeah, uh, basically, deferred lighting, you might have heard about it for your 3D games and stuff. And you might be struggling to understand how it works and how to implement it, maybe. I was struggling with this also. But then I figured out, why don't I take a step back and do 2D deferred lighting? And then think about it from that perspective. And once I started looking at that, looking into that, and just I just realized that 3D deferred lighting is exactly the same. It's pretty much the same darn thing. Uh, and this is how it works. So we're going to be using uh, what's called dot product lighting. And so what that does, a dot product, if you have two vectors, switch my pen color to black. If you have two vectors, all right, and these are unit vectors, by the way, so their length is one, both of them, because uh, that's all we need. We need the coefficient to multiply the light by. We need to find how close they are to each other, uh, the angle is, all right? So if we have two unit vectors and they're perpendicular so imagine that you have a light coming from this direction right and the normal is facing in this direction so this is actually the flat plane that you're shining against no light is gonna bounce from that it's not gonna bounce like in this direction it's not gonna bounce diffusely in that direction it's just that's crazy and so that helps us whereas if the light is coming from this direction it's going to bounce some certain decimal, um, pretty close to one if it's coming from here, in this direction. Right? Now, diffuse lighting, if you don't know what that is, diffuse reflection is basically how surfaces, n unlike mirrors, so if you have a light ray coming from here, it's not going to bounce off like there. It has an equal chance, a perfectly diffused surface, light ray, the light ray has an equal chance of bouncing in all directions. So we don't have to deal with any of the, you know, the directional stuff. Um, if you're going to implement specular lighting, you're going to want to do that. You can read about that. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's similar to this, so I suggest you watch this first. Um, but the dot product, if the vectors are in the same direction, it's going to return one, and if they're in, if they're perpendicular, it's going to turn zero, return zero, and if the angle is less or greater than 90, greater than 90, um, here, cause like, yeah, then it's also, it's going to return a negative number. So we're just concerned with zero to one here, right? And so that's basically how it's going to work. You have, oops, the light direction, the direction that the light is coming in from, and you have your normal. If you don't know what the normal is, it's the vector that's perpendicular to any surface. Um, this can be used for forces um, or for just light bouncing. So you might have heard of a normal map. Now, a normal map is just taking the uh, different components of the vector right, and putting them into RGB. So if you have you know, a vector that's pointing up, right? then the x and y component, let's just say it's a 2D plane, whatever, it's in 2D, um, and so we're just going to use the R and the G components of the RGB color space, all right, let's say it's 0 and 1, so then the R will be 0, and the G will be 2, 5, 5, because you get 8 bits per color, per channel, per color channel, so 0, 1, and that's how you can represent normals right now you may be thinking okay but how does this apply to 3d stuff at all because this is just this seems like 2d lighting well you need to find the direction that the lights coming in right so by using the normal map you can do that but the problem is with just 2d lighting not using any 3d stuff at all you have to set a an arbitrary height h for the light to bounce against and that can get pretty unrealistic for certain situations where you might want to have something 
on top of your light. So let's say you have a street lamp, and I'm showing you this because of an example, and you have a light here. Say the street lamp's not working, so they set up like a random lamp somewhere. That shouldn't show up if the camera is pointing this way. It's pointing straight down. The light ray is not going to come from there and hit that um, if the normal is facing in this direction. Whereas if the ground normal is facing this way, the light's going to go there and diffuse up into the camera lens. So yeah, that's pretty simple. Uh, anyways, but what we can do to make this 3D is we can have a height map. So what a height map will do, it'll say, okay, well the light's over here. So we have the light location for H, but we don't have the ground location. With a height map, you can control how far up the, the normal, not the ground, it can be whatever, how far up the normal is. And by doing that, you can get a 3D vector to compare against, all right, to get the dot product of, and that way you can get a lot more realistic lighting. I'm going to show you an example right now. Let's switch back to my actual mouse instead of the tablet. Um, this is using my engine, my custom engine. I'm not going to brag about that. Yes, I am. Um, and so, as you can see, the lighting here, it does not, it affects the things around it, right, in sort of a 3D way. But it does not affect, so this light is lower than the traffic lights, or the street lamps, whatever you want to call them. I, they're, they're street lamps, actually. Um, so these show up as the default ambient color, since they're not receiving any light from there. Whereas you can see that the poles under them actually do receive light. So that gives it a pretty realistic feel. This test ball, however, just uses a normal map. And it doesn't use a height map, so this light is just set at a default thing. Or else we might have the light going through the ball and you wouldn't see anything. So you understand that? Probably, yeah. So we're going to get into it. I'm not going to do it from scratch. I'm just going to show you how it works. Now, this is using my custom engine uh, written in OpenGL. Uh, if you want to learn how to make an engine, a uh, game engine kind of start on one. This is, I started watching uh, the, the Benny Boxes videos. And I'll probably put a link to his channel in the description. You can Google uh, the Benny Box. Uh, so he has some good tutorials on how to start an engine. Uh, you can follow them part way like I did. And then kind of go off on a tangent and add in the stuff that you want to make your engine useful. Uh, so I added in a lot of stuff, render passes, that are really helpful for this because you're going to need multiple render passes. Um, and so let's get into it. So first I'm loading in three resources because this is a 2D engine. This is, it uses, uh, it can be 3D if you want my engine, but this is just using only 2D things. All right, we have a diffuse texture. Uh, let me get our resources. That is the 3D test. Um, resources. So we have our diffuse color, which is just the gray and the red and stuff. This is just the colors of the surroundings. And we have our normals. Load. There we go. We have our normals. So these are the in RGB color space that tell how to uh, how light bounces off of them and then we have our depth which I'm naming Z uh, but it's depth right here so we have our depth and it goes from black to a grayish I could make it from black to white to make it better uh, so it's more detailed but right now it's just going from black to gray and it gives depth information for the light calculation All right. so what this is doing this program uh, this I'm using three render passes that I'm making and so I'm rendering the normal texture to the normal render pass I'm rendering the depth texture to the depth render pass I'm rendering the color textures to the color render pass All right. so then using multiple textures uh, passing them to shaders in GLSL um, so this is kind of a, an easy way to do it you set a GL active texture, uh, which for, in my case, is GL Texture 3, 
to the jail texture two and jail texture one, and I'm drawing that render pass, right? And uh, don't mind the color. This is um, just saying that it should be represented in color. It's not going to be like a depth, but um, I'm drawing the depth render pass, I'm drawing the normal render pass, then I'm drawing the color render pass in each of those three textures. Um, if you want to know how I'm drawing them, it's actually just binding the texture, geo bind texture, and then the texture identifier. Um, and so then this is using a specialized shader. Let's get into that shader. Uh, so it's called Deferred Lighting Shader 2D.java. Um, so I'm using many uniforms. There is the diffuse texture uniform, which is a sampler, the normal texture uniform, and the depth texture uniform. Also ambient light. And I have a point like point light struct in my oh these are XML files. One sec, let me get my shaders. In uh my shader, my GLSL shader, I have a struct which is the point light and it takes in a position, a color, and an intensity. So that's how intense the light is. Alright, so this is just looping through a um, an array list of point lights um, and it's just saying, okay, add uniform point light dot uh, whatever the number is because the shader itself also has a, um, an array of point lights. So it's looping through these point lights and it's assigning a c position, a color, and an intensity. So that's, that's done. And so then we update the uniforms. And here you see that um, my depth render pass is in GL texture 3, which, so that corresponds to 3. Alright? And then normal texture will be in GL texture two, two, diffuse in one, one. All right. So then I, so I assign those textures there. And I set the uniform, which is the ambient light. It's a vector. Uh, um, and then I set a uniform point light. All right. So that's a point light class that I've written. Um, point light, well that's me, point light 2D. Uh, it just stores a position, a color, and intensity, just like the struct in the shader. So that's just an easy way to manage them if you're, if you're pretty advanced and pretty skilled in Java, which you should be if you're going to um, embark on this journey. Uh, you'll know how to create a class like that. So, yeah, that's how the shader class is going to work. And now I'll show you the actual math stuff. This is the fun stuff. The GLSL programming, that's the fun stuff. Um, so these are all sampler 2Ds, the diffuse texture, normal texture, and depth texture. Uh, this confused me at first, actually. I thought it would have to be like equals equals 1 for the uh, GL, the texture where it's stored. Um, but you don't. It's just a normal, which you already assigned. And then you assign the uh, texture that it's on. So you can draw multiple sprites, multiple whatevers to that texture and then send that whole texture to the shader to be used. Um, just heads up if you're struggling with this stuff. Um, so these are all sampler 2Ds. I have the point light which is a struct right here and I have a vector 3 which is ambience. Alright, so what I'm doing, if you can see my messy code, I'm just gonna, yeah. What I'm doing here in the texture, so I'm making vectors out of these, vector fours. Um, and so what I'm doing, taking the diffuse texture and using the texture coordinate, whatever screen coordinate uh, the shader is on right now, um, and I'm getting the texture color from it, fetching the color and the same with the normal, and the same with the depth, all right? And I'm saying that if the depth equals zero, the depth alpha equals zero, then there's nothing there, all right? And so the I'm making a total light vector three, 
because, as you know, lighting is additive. So we need something to start out with. And if there's no light shining, you're going to have nothing. Thus, the vector 3, the blank vector 3, 0, 0, 0. All right. And for the point lights, I use a function, calculate light intensity. Now, I will show you that. And so I'm using the depth texture. It, I might change this in the future to make it better so that I'm using, I'm taking advantage of all, um, instead of just an 8-bit uh, one byte color, uh, so I only have 256 values, I might make it take advantage of all of those, uh, of all four. Uh, but right now I'm just getting the red component because it's a, again, it's a grayscale gradient. Therefore, the R, G, and B components are going to be the same for the depth. I'm sending in the normal, which is the vector 4, and the point lights. One second, I'm going to pause. Sorry, the phone rang. Um, so where was I? So yeah, we send in the normal, that's 4, and we set in, send in the point lights. All right, so that's the, uh, the point light at the integer i. Um, so it's that certain point light. We're looping through all the point lights. And so this is what it's doing. This is the calculate light intensity function. So what calc light intensity does, all right, it takes in a light, normal, and depth. And depth is a float. Um, and yeah. So I'm first calculating the direction that the light is coming in. So to do that, you take the light position, whoops, the light position, the xy position, and you subtract from it um, the position of where the, of the GL frag cord is. So this is the coordinate. You subtract where it is on screen, where which coordinate we are on screen, right? And so this is just to find um, the zero to one value. So this is just to make it from screen coordinates to world coordinates. I'm taking frag chord divided by the resolution. And your so that's your x and y components. And for your z component, light position dot z, and you're subtracting the depth. So what you're doing, you're basically subtracting, whoops, taking the light position and subtracting the world position. So then I'm taking the light direction dot x and I'm correcting for uh, the screen being non-square. So when we run the game, the screen isn't really, it's, it's not square. Um, it's going to be stretched since we're going from uh, 0 to 1. All right, 0 to 1. So we need to correct for that. And then I'm... Uh, saying that the length of the light direction is just the length of the direction. So that's the distance to uh, direction. Yeah. The d Okay. Float D, which is distance, is equal to the length of the light direction. Because the light direction right now is not actually a unit vector. It's a just a normal vector. So then we normalize the light direction and we normalize the normal direction uh, just so that their length is one and why is this not drawing just so their length is one All right. therefore making them unit vectors so that when we dot them it will be from zero to one or negative one to one All right. then our diffuse uh, amount there are diffuse color actually is the light color so that's from this structure struct the light dot color times and we're clamping this from zero to one the dot product n of n the normal to l light direction all right and so then we have that we have you know the diffuse but we need to figure out attenuation. So attenuation, what that is, is basically something you multiply by, all right? 
it's it's to find the distance to the light. So if we take the distance, all right, and we divide by the radius squared. This is more physically based than other methods you might find where it has like the uh, the exponent and stuff. So we basically do the distance divided by r squared plus one to the second power. So that we square that, and it's one over that, and that's attenuation. So basically, attenuation is uh. It sort of represents the distance to the light. If I get a useful pen right here, so it'll start at one and end up at zero. This is not a good pen to do that with. Um, so you have your light right here, and as you go away from the light, it starts to fade out. Understand that. Anyways, so it starts to fade out from that. Um, and limit line, that's just something I implemented uh, so that you can actually see the 3D space. So that's saying if it's at a certain distance, we're going to make that a color. All right? This color is going to be yellow. So you can actually see how these colors how that um, sort of 3D sphere drawn by the limit line is projected onto the 3D model. Well, it's actually a 2D, a 2D texture, but from a 3D model. So you can see uh, this area right here, when I shine it there, uses the depth information for that limit line. All right? So by doing that, we that's just an example of where the light ends, the kind of the limit of the light. And that's the 3D space. So we have that. All right. And all I'm doing is dithering it. So dithering is a process where you uh, add in noise so that it's not, you can't easily see the bands. You can read about light banding. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. We basically just dot the two vectors and then add them onto each other or multiply them by the attenuation. And so then, remember back to our total light, uh, our vector, we started off with, we're going to add the, uh, the light intensity of each light to that pixel. So then, what you end up with is the frag color, the output frag color, is going to be the total light times the texture color. All right, so that's the diffuse color. Um, and then the alpha channel is going to be texture color dot a, because uh, texture color the alpha channel from the texture color. Um, I hope this helped you. Again, sorry I haven't uploaded in so long, so so long. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, yeah.